Uh, a lot of young women are coming into the business right now and uh, injecting new blood into it, new insights, new ideas. Uh, one of the most interesting things is that the comic book reading public's attitude has changed. They are now more interested in the types of things that women traditionally have been interested in. Uh, the most popular comic being published right now by the mainstream, Marvel Comics, mm -hmm. is the X-Men. It has a huge following of both male and female readers, uh, practically equivalent, I think. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is that the comic relies heavily on characterization and the emotional relationships of the characters. And it's almost as if the action, the superheroism, is incidental. Yeah. And this is very important because this means that humanism is becoming an element in the comics where before it was just pow, bam, crash, mm -hmm. you know, and the guy gets up and walks yeah. away. Uh, more realistic emotions and so forth are being introduced. And this is the area in which women shine. Mm -hmm. They, they uh, are less afraid to delve into interpersonal relationships through their art and their writing. Mm -hmm. And so they're bringing a new dimension into the comics this way. Well, Wendy, how about ElfQuest? Let's focus on that a little bit. <laughs> yes, let's. Because... <laughs> well, ElfQuest is a story that's been with me since I was a child. It's very autobiographical, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, the characters have existed in one incarnation or another throughout my life. I've always been interested in drawing um, characters with cartoon proportions, animation style proportions, large heads, large eyes, little squashy bodies that you can do a lot with. Pointed ears. Po well, the pointed ears. <laughs> I have an affinity for fairy tales and, uh, and creatures of fantasy because I believe that they are symbols for truth. I believe you can teach more through fairy tales than most people realize. So in 1977, there was just a boom, an explosion of interest in fantasy. Sure. Star Wars came right. out, Wizards came out, Close Encounters came mm. out, Lord of the Rings was in right. the works. Um, the comics industry, the film industry, just seemed to be going at a parallel, and, and people were just craving fantasy. Mm -hmm. So Richard and I observed this, and we decided, you know, now would be the right time to take the gamble. I proposed the idea for the story to Richard. I gave him an idea of what mm -hmm. the structure of the plot would be. ElfQuest was plotted beginning, middle, and end before mm -hmm. we set anything down on paper. Uh, Richard and I have a very synergistic relationship and we sat down and we had a, a story conference just much the way mm -hmm. animators develop animated right. films. And uh, we developed all the characters, talked about their personalities and, and what would be happening throughout the story. And then we put together a, um, I guess you could call it a promo package mm -hmm. and uh, took it to the, uh, to the major companies and a few small independent ones and couldn't find any takers and so then we did it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that's essentially how you how you still work I assume. Absolutely yes um, some wonderful wonderful things have happened. Uh, when we came into uh, publishing ElfQuest in 1977-78 there were very few alternative comic publishers. Mm -hmm. We were practically the only game in town. Um, <clears throat> Mike Friedrich with Star Reach and uh, Bud Plant with First Kingdom and a couple of others were really, uh, it, it really was dominated by the two big companies, Marvel yeah. and DC. So the way was pretty well clear for us and ElfQuest, I guess because it was a very good package to begin with and the idea was so mm -hmm. strong and it just wanted to come out, right. uh, was an immediate success. Mm -hmm. Our circulation increased from the very first issue and it just has been steadily increasing. We started out with a circulation of 10,000 in 77 mm -hmm. and we're up to 90,000 now. That's great. I understand there's clubs and fan clubs there's and all fan sorts clubs. of things. Uh, the fans absolutely took it to their hearts. They, um, they have formed what we call little holts, little fan clubs. <laughs> That's great. And uh, there's buttons and certificates, yeah. and uh, they publish their own fan that's, magazines. That's it's, it's similar to the Star Trek syndrome, yeah. although not as large, of course, but we're hoping. Oh, yeah. We're hoping, you know. Well, you know, with your interest in animation mm -hmm. that you mentioned, too, it seems logical to me that obviously the next step or some point in time, uh, I, I should be able to see uh, Cutter and the other characters in ElfQuest uh, in, as an animated film. As an animated that is absolutely thing. guaranteed. Uh, right. An animated film That's is good. in the early stages of production right now. That's wonderful. And that was our ultimate dream for it. Uh, is it full length? Full length okay. feature wow. film. That is full really animation. Good. No rotoscoping. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, we're talking some we're talking real Disney. dedication here. Yes, we're talking. Right. We're but talking. also top quality. 
That's or, what we're hoping for. We have, we have found a studio that we feel we can work very closely with who want to give us a lot of creative control. And we're very excited about that. In ElfQuest, uh, Wendy, is there a message that, that you try to uh, convey to the readers of ElfQuest? I would say so. Um, as I said before, fairy tales are a means of telling truth through symbol. ElfQuest is a modern day fairy tale. The characters represent humanity, um, the good parts, the bad parts, the, the foibles and the aspirations and so forth. The kind of message I'm trying to get across is that there are certain values that are like universal good. And <clears throat> among those things are caring, compassion, understanding, um, trying to overcome prejudice and learn about something that you're afraid of. Uh, the fact that men and women inside are generally the same. They generally have the same feelings, the same hopes, dreams, and that uh, they can work together uh, without there being necessarily conflict simply because one is male and one is female. Um, Elfquist is a very humanistic kind of a story. It's not a story about a battle against uh, of good versus evil, like most yeah. heroic fantasy is. ElfQuest is about knowledge versus ignorance. The characters start out in the dark. By the end of the story, they've gained knowledge that will enable them to go on to a new level of consciousness. And this is what I'm hoping for, for my race, my humanity. I'm hope Now that we have the ability to destroy ourselves, and it's hanging over our heads, it's frightening us, it's making us not know which way to turn, Violence is heavier now than it's ever been before. Kids are getting loved less now than they ever have been before. Everybody's frightened. Now that we have this hanging over our heads, we can't afford not to get our heads straight about what's really important in life. And I'm hoping that ElfQuest will show people or that people are learning through the characters that it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be not sure of where you're going, but try to go ahead anyway. You just don't hurt people in the process. Mainly has to do with getting along together. Yes, it does. Exactly. We deal with war and violence and the terrible, terrible consequences of it in the story. Uh, our characters are not lily white. They make mistakes. They make errors. They commit acts of violence. But they learn from them. And this is all we can hope. If violence must exist in the world, then we must learn from it. Wendy, uh, who do you feel that, uh, you know, to get to where you are today and, and, and hopefully to where you'd like to be tomorrow, who do you feel that you owe along the way? Oh, my goodness. Um, I owe everybody who ever had a dream and saw it through, uh, no matter who told them they couldn't do it, Disney. Tezuka. I also owe the women who were brave enough back in the early 60s when the feminist movement was just starting to get angry, to yell out their anger. I owe them for having the courage to do that because now, now that the point has been made, we can make the point again more gently. Now we don't have to shout to be heard. And that means we can add more quality and, and complexity to our message rather than hitting people over the head with it. 